Hello, and today we are going to talk about a BBC programme called Dad's Army. Now, Dad's Army ran for nine series, as well as having three Christmas specials. And it ran from 1968 to 1977 and was written by Jimmy Perry and David Croft. Now, Dad's Army followed a group of men who were in the Warmington on Sea Home Guard. And for those of you who don't know what the Home Guard is, basically during the Second World War, when they drafted people off to go and fight in the army and the navy and fight the Nazis, there were obviously a bunch of people stuck back home who were maybe a little too old or they were invalided and weren't able to go and fight in the war. However, they were able to go and fight in the Home Guard. And basically they used any means possible, improvised weaponry, that sort of thing, in order to provide a defence for, you know, um, on the, the coasts the coasts of Britain and stuff like that. So the, if and when the Nazis uh, did attack, there would be a line of defence waiting for them when they got there. And it's... Uh, Despite the, the sort of dark subject matter, it's very, um, it's a light-hearted programme. It does have its sentimental moments. And I was discussing this um, actually with my, my father the other day. It's not, it's not a laugh-a-minute comedy. It's classed as a comedy, but it's not, you know, crazy funny. It's, it's got a lot of sentiment to it as well. Although, of course, it does have its funny moments. And most of the comedy is centred around uh, the little... The, the characters um, sort of habits uh, you know they, they've got various things that they all say each week and you kind of look forward to every new episode you watch you kind of look forward to to um, Lance Corporal Jones not getting his drill done in time standing to attention and standing at ease and stuff like that we'll talk about the characters uh, in a little minute but basically first of all before we go on I want to show you uh, my dad's army collection of stuff. So the first thing to look at, I think we'll look at the oldest uh, book first, and that's this book here. Now this uh, is probably out of print by now, I'm not sure, I think it was, this was published first in 1975, so that's it's 41 years old. And basically it's, uh, it's a great little book, it's very thin, slim line, it's got, that's the front cover there, Dad's Army. And that's the back there. Nice little picture. And basically it's got a few bits about it, bits about the programme. It's got forward by Arthur Lowe. And then it's got a few scripts with pictures. A few scripts with pictures. Um, for example, there's one of the scripts there. And it's got a few pictures. And so basically it's mostly scripts, but there's a little bit of information as well. And it's got a bit of information about some of the supporting characters, um, such as the Warden and the Vicar and the Verger and stuff like that. So it's a nice little book, but mostly scripts, but it does have a little bit of other information as well. It's got some newspaper cuttings at the back, that sort of thing of the Home Guard. And it's a, it's a very nice little book, but I do suspect it'll be out of print by now. It's simply called Dad's Army uh, by Perry and Croft. But a very nice little book, good read. Now the second one I've got is this book here, Dad's Army. This is by Graham McCann and it was published in, first published in 2001 in Great Britain. So I suspect this will still be on print. You might be able to get it on Amazon or from the BBC store or whatever, something like that. Very good book, very insightful. It basically goes through the whole the whole beginning of it and it talks about how uh, you know at the beginning uh, the BBC weren't too keen on Arthur Lowe because he was he worked for ITV and obviously the BBC if you didn't if you didn't already have a foot in the door at the BBC then they weren't very keen on having you come along and acting for them but uh, Harry and Croft were insistent on getting Arthur Lowe and so it's very insightful this book um, it's got some great pictures as well there's a there's one great picture which has what they actually did during the war. So, for example, Arnold Ridley was actually a major in the army. Um, Arthur Lowe was actually a sergeant major, which is very interesting. Um, Bill Pertwee was a schoolboy. He plays the warden, of course. Clive Dunn was a trooper. 
Uh, David Croft, who wrote the series, was also a major. Edwin, Edward, Edward Sinclair, excuse me, was a sergeant. Frank Williams was a schoolboy. Ian Lavender wasn't even born. He plays Pike. Uh, James Beck, Jimmy Beck, was a schoolboy. Walker. Jimmy Perry was a sergeant. John Laurie was in the Home Guard. So that's how old John Laurie was. He was already too old to go and fight the war. And John LeMessurier was actually a captain. He was an officer. So there's some really good uh, pictures in here. And it's a very insightful biography as well. So I do recommend uh, getting this one if you can get your hands on it. Just Dad's Army by Graham McCann. A very good book. The third and final book I have is A Mammoth. The Complete A to Z of Dad's Army. You can see how big that is. This is an excellent book. I got this a long while back as a, as a Christmas present, I believe. And it is just an amazing book. It's fully authorised by Jimmy Perry and David Croft. And there's the back there. And it basically just has an A to Z of all the characters, all the episodes, and it gives you all this insightful information. I haven't read it cover to cover because there's so much in it. But there's some great pictures. I love this picture on the front page here. It's a drawing of all the characters, and I, I really like that there. And it gives you an episode list, and just all this various different things. And what I like at the back as well is, there's a picture collection of the characters. Some of them in acting roles, some of them in the war. That's John Laurie there, that sort of thing. You've got Jimmy Beck. And that goes through all the characters. This is a really good book. It's written by Jimmy uh, Richard Weber, excuse me, with Jimmy Perry and David Cross, uh, David Croft, and it's called The Complete A to Z of Dad's Army. So if you can still find that, this was made a long time ago. I can't remember when, but it should still be available on Amazon or whatever. Uh, do get yourself a copy of that. Very good book. Now on to the DVDs. So the, the first DVD I ever got was the complete first series and the lost episodes of series two. So this is what I was talking about. Um, so because the BBC wiped some of the episodes uh, in the 60s, they didn't think it was worth keeping because they didn't realise that people would be watching them in years to come. They just thought that the programme would be shown and that would be the end of it. So they wiped them, but some of them uh, were left in people's garages, they were in their attics, that sort of thing, and they've been found. So this one was when, I think... There's, there has been more. I think we might have all of them now. I'm not sure. I'll need to check the full DVD list. Um, and it's that has the first three episodes of Series 2 as well as all of Series 1. And it's got the documentary Missing Presumed White, which some of you may have seen. I think the BBC have shown that documentary on occasion. And it's also got the audio recordings of the Missing Series 2 episodes. So this is a very good DVD. But the main one is, of course... The complete collection. Uh, every single episode. Now let me just check whether... I don't know if it says actually. Um, yeah, so this... So that there are still some missing episodes. This has... Yeah, this is basically the first two series are the same DVDs as this one. But I think it has the audio ones as well. So this is all nine series, and uh, I, I got that a couple of years back, I think. I actually bought it for my father as a, as a Christmas present, but we, we sort of share things, so very good. It's got a lovely picture on the side of all the characters, and it's got a bit in the back there. So this is obviously the, the holy grail of Dad's Army. It's every single episode, apart from the missing ones, but they've got the audio ones. So that's my sort of Dad's Army collection, and... Basically, I watched Dad's Army as a kid, as I did most of the things that I watched, and it was very funny to me. Um, and as I've gotten older, I've stuck with the series. I still watch it. I still love it. I think it's got more of a sentimental value to me now. I can see the, the sentimental side to it, which is when you're a kid, you don't realise the deepness of the situation. It's just this funny programme, whereas... When you get a bit older, you realise it's actually about the war and about a serious issue. Um, there have been uh, some spin-offs. There was a, the American one they did the when the, the German U-boat commander uh, got captured. Uh, that 
which in the original episode f- features the the famous line "Don't tell him, Pike." Uh, that was done in America, but that really wasn't successful, and it doesn't work. British comedy doesn't work when you transfer it to American comedy. It's a, it's a simple rule; it simply doesn't work. Um, they also did a film version with the original actors. Um, I can't remember when that was. Uh, it was it was okay. Uh, I've yet to I've yet to um, watch that recently. I watched it a long time ago, um, but I haven't. I've got it. My dad recorded it on VHS off the television a long time ago. I don't know if there's a DVD version available of it. Um, it was an okay film. It kind of uh, retold the story of how the Home Guards got together. So it wasn't like brand new material. It featured a lot of the um, comedy sketches that were in the first few episodes. But it's still a, a reasonably good film. Uh, and and I'd like to, to see it again shortly. Now, talking about Dad's Army films... There has, of course, been, and this is why I'm doing this video just now, there has, of course, been the new Dad's Army film out. Now, I haven't seen it, so I can't really comment too much on it. My first impression from the trailer was, I don't think this is going to be any good. And the the reviews that have been online and stuff like that don't seem to be, don't seem to be very... Um, praising of it that some of them are really slamming it which is is a bit of a shame but um like i say i haven't seen it properly so i can't comment on it um i don't know whether i'll see it i might just wait for it to come out on dvd and get it for a cheap price something like that but apparently it's not very good it's got a few good actors in it and apparently um frank williams who plays the, the vicar he gets a cameo role and apparently ian lavender who plays private pike also has a cameo role so it might be worth it to go and see just for for those two but like i say i haven't seen the film from what i saw from the trailer it didn't seem like it was very funny um they should probably just have left it alone really you can't replace the original actors you just can't replace them we'll talk a bit about them so the um obviously captain mannering who was played by arthur lowe he's my favorite character in it very pompous guy and just the comedy comes from him. I think one of the main comedy aspects of Dad's Army is the sort of class struggle between Captain Mannering and Sergeant Wilson, played by John, John LeMessurier, of course. And it's quite funny because uh, Sergeant Wilson is immeasurably classier than Captain Mannering. But Captain Mannering wants to appear more civilised and classy than uh, Wilson. So it's quite funny when who should be the sergeant because really um, Captain Manning should be the sergeant and Sergeant Wilson should be the captain because of obviously the the way the army worked. Particularly back then uh, the, the posher person would become the officer and the not so posh person would be the soldier. So a lot of the comedy comes between those two um, and, and their class struggle and also Elizabeth as well. Now the one thing I wanted to mention this is just sort of a, a, a cover-all uh, introduction into Dad's Army, just talking about the whole series and my thoughts on it. What I might do is go through it series by series and just talk about different episodes then, but that's in the future. But the, the one episode that I do want to talk about, I believe it's called, is it Mum's Army? And the it's such a beautiful episode uh, because it's got um, Carmen Silvera in it who uh, has done a lot, a lot of television, you might know from a low low. And it's sort of, obviously, Captain Manning is married to the elusive uh, Elizabeth, who we never see her, apart from uh, just this humongous uh, bottom in the air raid shelter in one episode. And Captain Manning falls in love with this woman. And it's just such a beautiful episode, uh, so emotionally charged particularly when Captain Manring has to say goodbye to her at the end of the episode. Um, it's just a, a, a beautiful moment, and that's probably one of my favourite episodes. It shows Captain Manring's human side, and that it, uh, he would have left Elizabeth immediately and, and married uh, this other I can't remember what her name is. Uh, there's a funny moment where Wilson's charming the uh, all the ladies that come in to help out, and he goes, oh, what a pretty name. And Captain Manring's really annoyed, and then when... Uh, when Carmen's character comes in and says her name, Captain Mary says, oh, what a prison name. It's really funny, but 
it's more of a poignant episode and probably one of my favourite episodes of the entire series. Obviously you've got uh, other characters, we've talked about Lance Corporal Jones who was never quite in time with his drill, his steps. That was played by Clive Dunn uh, and he was considerably younger than Lance Corporal Jones was on the screen, they made him up. You've got Private Walker, now sadly um, James Beck who played Private Walker uh, died halfway through making the series which was a real shame because he was a really good character and a great actor. And he was replaced by um, a Welshman called uh, Private Cheeseman or something like that. I don't think that... His character didn't really work. Um, I think it was just missing Private Walker. But he was a really... The, 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 you know, the Spiv character could get you anything off the black market. Private Fraser was really good uh, as the Undertaker. Just sort of this uh, doer Scotch guy. Really liked him. And... You've got Godfrey as well, the timid old man. And Private Pike, who was probably, I think he was too young to join the army and that's why he was in the home card. And there's an episode with Private Pike where everyone thinks he's going off to join the army. <laughs> and he goes for a fish, Captain Manry takes them all for a fish supper. And uh, it turns out at the end that he didn't, so Captain Manry's quite annoyed about that. But it's a funny episode as well. So I'm, I'm just talking a little bit about the characters, not really going in depth. But I really enjoyed this series. Um, now I think there was one other thing I wanted to talk about and that was actually the BBC documentary that they just made uh, a couple of months back. They made it um, in... Okay, I'll have to edit those two videos together. Apologies for that. But they made the uh, the BBC documentary. I thought at the beginning it was kind of silly with like the guy playing Jimmy Perry. It was kind of silly in his acting edition. Um, but it was a really good, um, it was a really good documentary. I think they got the characters right mostly, particularly the executives at the BBC. Uh, they were actually really quite funny. Paul Fox, who was the the controller of BBC One, was uh, quite strict and stuff like that. But the the other two were quite funny. The, what was it? The head of light entertainment, and the other guy with the beard. He was really funny as well. So it was a good documentary. I thought it was a bit silly to begin with, but. It was it was a good documentary in the end. It was good. So that's just a sort of introduction to Dad's Army. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you enjoyed looking at my collection of stuff. If you want to know where I got any of those, you can message me. I don't know where the, the one from 1975 came from. Uh, that was my dad's. And um, what I'll do in the future is perhaps talk a little bit more about the individual series. But I just thought I'd put that video out there and let me know. Uh, your thoughts on Dad's Army, if you enjoyed it, what you thought of it, and uh, we'll, we'll get a little discussion going. So thanks for watching, anyway, and oh, let me know if you've watched the film and what you think of the film as well, uh, because I'd be interested to see and hear people's opinions on that. So do let me know. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.